Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today we are back with yet another video. And today I'm super excited because we are going to be ranking the characters from Danganronpa Another. And yeah, that was a series that was so freaking fun to play on my channel. We got so many great memes and memories from it. And I do eventually still want to make character analysis videos on these characters and just like other content for this game too. And I thought this would be the perfect way to like refresh my memory on these characters since it's been like a few months since I played the game. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you do. Do, and if you want more Danganronpa and other content. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So I'm gonna start out with Yuki Maida, our lucky boy. And I do wanna note that I'm gonna be separating Yuki and Utsuro for this, just because like, I kinda feel like Utsuro deserves his own spot, you know what I mean? And you know, I got a decent bit to say about Yuki. I liked Yuki a lot. There's obviously for like slightly meme reasons of, <laughs> I just love the fact that he simped for Kenjo the whole freaking game, dude. I was like, he is just like me for real, like. <laughs> I was a Kenjo apologist my whole playthrough and I had Yuki backing me up every second of the way. Obviously, I did very much enjoy that ship too while I was playing. But you know, overall, I feel like Yuki was a pretty well like established protagonist character too. I feel like Lanouge was probably trying to make a character that kind of like parallels Nagi, but with a twist. I think that's why when he was first introduced, I didn't really have like any expectations for him. I just kind of expected him to be like that stereotypical like shonen pure boy type of character. So I was like, eh, whatever, let's move on to, let's move on to the real ultimate. Sorry, Maida. But um, I was really pleasantly surprised by his role in the killing game. My favorite scene of Yuki is probably in chapter four when everybody's starving to death in the ballroom. And like everybody else in the group, he starts to like slowly approach his limit and he eventually begins to unconsciously plan a murder. I just really don't think that's something that I could have ever seen them doing with like Nagi and Trigger Happy Havoc. I could see him having like a split thought about it, but not actually like going to the arsenal and having to get like tackled by Kinjo to stop him. You know what I mean? Like he was really about to do it. And I just thought that scene was like so cool. Made him just feel like a lot more realistic and relatable to me and showed that he's a character that does have more like genuine human flaws, which I really respect. So yeah, honestly, I think Maida is a pretty good protagonist. I think I'm gonna put him in B. I was kind of going back and forth between putting him in A or B, but honestly, I feel like although he was a good protagonist, the main reason I'd want to put him in A is just because I freaking love Utsuro so much. And I promised myself I would separate the two, so I'm gonna put him in B. But yeah, uh, moving on, we have Akane Taira. Ugh! Queen! Oh my god, I love her so freaking much, dude. Oh my gosh. I feel like she's an S character, honestly. She's so freaking good, dude. I mean, I just feel like objectively, Akane is like an amazing character. I feel so bad, too, because when I first started playing the game, I was so sure she was just gonna be like a Sayaka knockoff. And I am so sorry, Queen. I am so sorry for the disrespect. I was absolutely blown away when she was revealed as the mastermind in Chapter 5. She was like probably the last character I expected. I think like the main reason I was so surprised was just because like she had such a prominent and like interesting character arc throughout the game. I kind of felt like it had finished, which I guess in a way it did so they could like move on to the next part. But that was like not the next step that I thought they were going to take. But at the same time, I think it fit really well. And it even led her to have a further arc after that reveal. She was just a character that was like always ever growing. And like, I just really appreciate that and respect that about her. I think it was really interesting to see her struggling with her loyalty to Utsuro as well as like her memories from her friendships with like Ayame and the others. I just feel like it was really well done and it was really nice to see that she continued to grow and evolve even after such a big like plot twist, do you know what I mean? I always like it when villains feel more human, so I thought they did a really good job with her. Next up is Ayame Hatano, our, our lesbian track star. She's a runner, she's a track star and she's gay, probably, allegedly. In my brain, she is. I really like Ayame a lot, though. Her trial was honestly what started to make me kind of like look at DRA as more than just like a fan project. The murder was so much more complex and it had so many like twists and turns and it really made me feel like I was playing like an actual like Danganronpa case. Like I felt like it was on par with the canon games. I also really like the fact that Ayame's death was like so important to Akane's character arc and it was never like brushed under the rug or like forgotten about, I feel like. It was so powerful to me in the epilogue when Akane finally admitted that her friendship with Ayame was like what led her to like unconsciously want to help the other students escape and survive. That made me so happy to like just realize she was still thinking about her like ah oh, that made me so emotional. I'll put Ayame in B. I feel like I kept debating whether or not to put Ayame in A or B. Honestly a lot of the stuff that I really like about her is just how she affected Akane. So I'm like 
uh, trying to think if that should count or not. I like that she made me love Akane so much, <laughs> you know? Damn, that's cold. That's cold, Weeby. Okay, moving on. We're gonna be looking at Haru. Ah, I love Haru so freaking much, dude. He's just such a goofy and lovable king, you know? Like, I loved him the whole game, but obviously chapter four is where he really shines, and that was the chapter that really made me fall in love with his character. His plan to sacrifice himself and save Satsuki, like, literally made me cry. It was so sweet. I'm such a sucker for like tragic scenarios like that when there's like two characters who like realize their feelings for each other but it's like too late that just like tugs at my heartstrings so bad like the fact that they like were so close yet so far at first he was a character that I thought I was never really gonna take seriously he just kind of seemed like the comic relief like the Hagakuri of the group he's gonna last till the end and be goofy and silly the whole time but that chapter really changed like my view of him how I perceived him but I feel like it also stayed true to his original kind of like goofy lovable self you know what I mean? Overall, he's just a solid dude who deserved so much better. I'm still delusional about him being dead. Even like right now, in my brain, him and Satsuki are in Mexico. <laughs> right now at this very moment, getting married still. <laughs> Their wedding has lasted for like five months, but they're still there, still getting married. Everything's great. Everything's fine. We love it here. So I will put him in A rank for always Delulu, Weeby. Always Delulu. Next up, we're moving on to Kakaru Yamaguchi. I feel like Danganronpa Another is really good at flushing out like a vast majority of the cast, making them feel like unique and important to the story regardless of how long they lived. Unfortunately, I do not think Kakaru is one of those characters. He's a sweetheart and his quirks are really cute. One of my favorite tropes is like the scary looking characters who are actually adorable sweethearts on the inside. But there's no arc or actions that I can look back on that really stand out to me or felt like important to the story. Unless... I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. I'm so oh. oh god, we've lost her. Oh no, guys, we need to watch after her, dude. Tyra is all good. <laughs> Can I just really say that? <laughs> Tyra's all good now. <laughs> she's she's totally good, guys. Why why are you worried? She looks perfectly fine. Never mind, S++. That was an iconic moment and nobody can take that away from you, Kakaru. But yeah, although I do like Kakaru, I feel like it's just kind of fair to put him in C. Unfortunately, I do feel like he's probably one of the weakest out of the cast from this game. Next up is Kanata and Nori, and honestly, she's kind of similar to Kakaru in my opinion. I hate to say it, because like, again, she's such a sweetheart. I was super upset about her death because she was so sweet, but I feel like I was also upset about her death just because I felt like there was wasted potential there. She did stand out to me more than he did. I think it's mostly because her autopsy reports were just like so important to the cases. But overall, I feel like the thing that I remember the most about Inori is just the fact that she had probably one of the worst deaths in like all of Danganronpa history, in my opinion. Overall, she is a sweetheart. I really do love her personality, but kind of similar to Kakaru, I feel like they didn't really do enough with her for me to feel quite as connected with her as I do with like other characters in the game. So I feel like C is appropriate for her. I'm sorry, Inori, you went through that awful death and now I'm putting you in C rank. It's so messed up. It's so wrong. Oh man. I'm gonna guilt trip myself into putting her into S. Next up is Kinji Uehara, who it's no secret I love this man. I stand this man when no one else did and when no one else should, I might add, but I did it. I supported him no matter what. I said, hey, if you want to deep fry a nori, you do it, boo. You do it. I'm sure you got good reasons for it, sweetie. Okay, to be real though, obviously I partially love him just because of the memes. The Yasify meme was just so fun. If you're not familiar with my playthrough, basically in like the very first episode, I was able to do some free time events and I got Kenji's like special gift, which is the holy nails. So I thought they meant like nails, like, you know, nails and not like nails as in like nails that you hammer into a cross. So I thought he was like literally gushing over like acrylic nails or something. And so like the chat and me just started memeing on him the rest of the playthrough, calling him like queen telling him to slay and serve and talking about how he yassifies people for baptism since he's just so, you know, so slay. So honestly, those memes just really made me like him because they were so freaking fun. I was just really impressed by how he was like actually just such a genuinely sweet dude. I feel like the way he's presented, he does seem like accepting of everybody. And honestly, he seems like what a real Christian should be like besides the murder part. Like really, 
the way you killed Inori Kenji was not, it was not necessary. It was really unnecessary, boo. I feel like his story in the game really was super impactful too. I could sympathize a lot with him when it was revealed that he was the traitor and the reason he killed was to save his orphans. And I was just so gutted when Monokuma showed that he'd killed them anyways. Like, I feel like that was such a pivotal point in the game and showing like how much more sinister this Monokuma is that's like inspired by Utsuro. Cause I don't think Monokuma from like Trigger Happy Havoc or the other games would have done something that bad. I feel like Monokuma generally would stick to his promises in the canon game. So I was just so shocked by that. And it really made me sympathize with him. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a biased bitch. Okay, Kenji's in top tier. He's in the bestie who can do no wrong tier because it's true. He can do no wrong. And I still will be making that video about how he did nothing wrong. And he's never done anything wrong in his entire life. Thank you. God bless. Next up is Kyoka Maki, who, uh, meh. Yeah, F tier for having a crush on Mitch. That was, that was wrong, girl. I am ashamed and embarrassed for you, sweetie. Okay, I'm kidding. I'll rank her for real. I honestly do like Maki besides that one, that one severe, severe lapse in judgment that she had. I'm just gonna say that wasn't her. That was somebody else. That was also Mitch in a wig, just pretending to be Maki and pretending to be in love with him. We're just, we're gonna say that for you, queen, to save you the embarrassment of having to admit that. Okay, so obviously Maki didn't have that much screen time compared to other characters. So I feel like it's kind of hard to compare her to them since they had just like so many more opportunities to shine but all things considered I like her a lot her free time events were super duper adorable and I do love how much of a badass she was in the flashback I feel like if she would have lasted longer she could have been a really big help for the others in the killing game and honestly I think if she did live longer she probably could have become one of my favorites but since she didn't really have that much of an opportunity to shine I'm not quite as bonded with her as I am others so I'm probably gonna end up putting her in C as well I still like her but yeah kind of similar to the other two I don't really feel like I connected with her that much. I feel like I mostly just kind of like her as a concept. Next up is Kazuna Tamori and... I have very mixed feelings on her overall. I love her a lot as a character, but she is just such an awful person that I feel like conflicted sometimes about her. As a refresher, for those of you who forgot or didn't play her free time events, I am here to inform you. During that, she mentions that she uses guys basically who are infatuated with her to buy her things and she'll use them to like harass people that she doesn't like to. And as for their reward, she lets them sleep with her friends. And then when Yuki asks her about how her friends feel about that, She's like, consent? What's that? A lamau. <laughs> like, basically, I like was shook to my core, to my core when I played those free time events. Because I played them right after she died. And I was like, so sad. I was like, wow, my girl was really changing. Like, she was about to have her arc. And then I played her free time events. And I was like, oh, this is how she is. Okay. <laughs> it's like, maybe I'm not that sad anymore. As horrible as she is, I just can't help but be fascinated by her because like in her free time events, she does seem like genuinely surprised when Yuki finds fault with like the fact that she's like pimping her friends out without their consent and stuff like that. She's like, what? Why are you saying what I'm doing is wrong? So like, it really makes me wonder like what she's been through to think that way. It's like we get a little bit of her backstory in her free time events, but God, I wish I could just like pay Lanouge to make like an alternate version where she becomes a survivor and we get to hear like her full trauma dump. I think she would have been a really good candidate to live until the end of the game too. I, I feel like she could have gotten the redemption arc that was scrapped for Sionji and Danganronpa 2. But yeah, overall, I think there's a lot of unused potential for Kazuna. I just cannot help but be fascinated by her. I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion or not, but maybe I'll put her in A. I don't know if she deserves it, but she's just so damn interesting, dude. I kind of feel bad putting her next to Haru though, since Haru is like such a sweetheart. I'll move him up to S since I added on another tier for the bestie can do no wrong tier. Basically my biased faves tier. <laughs> Next up is Makako Kurakawa and she's just obviously such an absolute sweetheart. I really loved seeing like the contrast in her personality from like the flashbacks compared to how she acted in the killing game after like the memory storage device affected her. I feel like it was intentional for her personality change to kind of like parallel Yuki's in that you know in the flashbacks Yuki is antisocial but in the killing game he's very helpful and kind and encouraging and then for Makako it's the opposite in the flashback she's kind encouraging and helpful and then the killing game she's antisocial and quiet and keeps her distance so I thought that was kind of an interesting like parallel between the two characters I'll never forget in chapter five how confused I was when she just started like gaslighting Yuki about him killing and it's such a fun trial to like look back on when you know like 
all the twists at the end of the game and how like Yuki's Utsuro because when I was playing that trial I was like so convinced that she was evil but now looking back at it I'm like wow she was trying to trick everybody to think it was Yuki because Yuki's literally the mastermind she was doing that to help us and like at the time I was like fuck you Kurokawa you evil bitch <laughs> so I kind of like feel bad but also it's kind of funny to look back on you know what I mean and like think about how like I was just so blind during that time obviously she's just a very admirable character too like she was so brave to go up against the painful side effects from the memory storage device to tell the group as much information as possible she even died from telling them as much information as possible like I literally have nothing bad to say about her she is an absolute queen I'm gonna put her in S too because I don't know the more I talk about her the more I'm like damn she was awesome dude get on you okay so next up we have Rei Makaru. So obviously Rei, she's just like the ultimate girl boss. I like just love how blunt she is. Like she will literally just call somebody a bitch straight to their face and it's just so hilarious. And honestly, I feel like she got the arc that Tagami should have gotten in Danganronpa 1. Like, I feel like he kind of softens up in Trigger Happy Havoc, but like, it's so subtle that like, I wouldn't even really call it a character arc, to be honest. Rei, on the other hand, had a really significant switch after Satsuki's death. She seemed genuinely moved, and she really dedicated herself to instructing the other students afterwards to take down the mastermind. It was so epic, too, to see her finally using her girl bossing for good. But yeah, I feel like by the end of the game, you can tell that she's a character that's really change from like this cold and distant person to somebody who really loved and cared about the others and like genuinely wants to avenge them. Tagami on the other hand I was never really convinced that he felt that way. So yeah I really like Rei. I think she had a good arc. I found her backstory to be nice and uh, very sympathetic too. I think I'll also put her in S. I'm like not the most critical person ever huh? Next up is Satsuki and <laughs> She's just the best girl, dude. I fucking love Satsuki so much. Oh my god. She's just, she's iconic. She's the moment. She's the greatest to ever do it. Like, she's probably the only character that's actually done nothing wrong that's gonna go into this tier. I feel like my favorite characters are either characters who have done everything wrong or who have done nothing wrong. In Satsuki, she's, she falls into the latter category. Like, she's just so sweet and so funny. I will never forget her doing her little dancey dance in the corner while we're all, like, trying to investigate Kazuna's corpse like she just you know she walks her own path and I just I respect that and I love that for her obviously it was chapter four that really made me like fall in love with her character and I feel like there's so many Danganronpa characters that claim to have like killed somebody in order to like save the group but like Satsuki she really did it like she really did it with no ulterior motives like she really admits it at the very beginning of the trial and nobody believes her because she's just so out there like like that scene is just so iconic and it honestly did just like really completely throw me off her trail during that trial because I was like, what killer would admit within like the first 30 seconds that they did it? Like that really was such a good idea, I feel like. Also Satsuki, she really did have like a super tough upbringing too and she managed to stay positive like regardless of all of it. And even like some of the details of her backstory, like the fact that she's always compared to her siblings and it kind of seems like she has an inferiority complex because of that. It's something like I can personally really Really relate to which is why I think like I just love her character so much and why she's just my best girl. Next up is Turuya Oturi which honestly the whole game I had a soft spot for Turuya. He's such a little cutie pie even when he's being a little stinker. I do think he had a really great arc like I was so pissed at him during chapter four when he was going so hard on Satsuki and Haru but was actually stealing food himself too. Like he acted so selfish during that chapter but at the same time I do feel like I can sympathize with his actions kind of similar to how I felt about Yuki. Also it was hilarious to me when he straight up in that chapter was just like hey guys you ever heard about a majority vote? Oh my gosh I was like oh my god so Hiyori is that you? What are you doing here? I don't agree with his actions at all during that chapter but I do feel like I can to a certain point sympathize with him since he was like starving to death. I also really appreciate how much emphasized how much he regretted his actions after the fourth chapter too. I feel like him learning about Haru and Satsuki's sacrifice really impacted him for the better and oh my gosh him wearing Haru's glasses after that chapter was so sweet oh man my heart just melted when I saw that yeah I like Tariya a lot he's a good guy I'll put him in a rank you know what time it is? Time for the Kinjo Cole, baby! He's up next! Y'all all know where Kinjo's going. He's done nothing wrong in his entire life. That is so true, bestie. Look at him! Look at him. He's just a little scrunkly. Come on. Could he do anything wrong? I 
I personally don't think so. Okay, obviously I love Kinjo for a lot of reasons, you know, some good, some questionable, but still there's a lot of reasons. Okay, so it's not a secret that like, I love the unhinged characters and like death games. I just feel like, you know, they add a little bit of spice. They keep you on your toes, keep it interesting. You know what I mean? I just feel like those characters add a sense of unease that really keeps you on your edge. And I feel like Sarugi is a really cool take on this type of character. So he obviously has this like twist sense of justice and only sees things in black and white. On the surface, he's this perfect beacon of justice. I feel like in these games, the characters are always like, we need to call the police to help us. But it's like, in this game, hey, you have a friendly neighborhood officer in your group. So of course, like instinctively, they're gonna want to rely on him. But as a lot of us know, a lot of cops are corrupt. And it really emphasizes that fact once the first murder takes place. And you know, Kenjo starts to show his true colors. Then that facade of like perfect pure white justice shatters and since it's a killing game, more deaths and morally gray situations happen and continually Kenjo breaks down to the point of no return. I feel like his character is like the perfect representation as to why a really simplistic look of justice, like a black and white outlook is just wrong. And having a character that proves this idea wrong being a cop is just the icing on the cake for me. I will say another reason why I like these types of characters and Sarugi as well is just because he's super entertaining. He adds tension to the group and because of his twisted morals and his unhinged personality. He does some crazy shit from time to time. You know what I mean? And it's fun to watch. Like, you know, when he tried to make everybody comfortable together. That's like one of my favorite scenes in the entire game because of just like how far gone he was, you know, and seeing everybody's reaction to it. It's very entertaining in a game like this. I do know a lot of people are conflicted on the fact that he like regresses after chapter six and I can understand that. And you know, at first I was pretty sad about it too, but also I forgive him and he He's done nothing wrong and he should not be ashamed whatsoever. Stay the way you are, bestie. We all love you for it. By everybody, I mean me. Next up is Yamato Kizaragi. I mean, he's a king. He is the only man pure enough to fix Kenjo. That's how you know he's the greatest of all time, man. I kind of feel bad because when you first started seeing like pictures of him and stuff, I was like so convinced that he was evil and he was gonna be like a Makuro Ikasaba, like hiding in the school. I remember when he showed up in chapter five, I was so expecting him to be like a little shit and to be like antagonizing and stuff. And then he starts coming out saying like nonsense. I was so blown away and shocked by that. Of course, before he um, has the side effects of the memory storage device, he's a total sweetheart. And we see that through his flashbacks and through alter ego. He was like literally the opposite of what I expected. He was the one like trying to save them from despair and Utsuro. I always like the fact that Kizaragi seemed to be like suspicious of Utsuro and Akane from the beginning too. Like when him and Makako are like confirmed confronting them for the first time, Makako's like, no, hope guys, hope, 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 hope. And Kizaragi's like, I knew you guys were fucking weird. <laughs> he was just so real for that, you know? But yeah, I like Kizaragi a lot too. I'll put him in A as well since um, I like him a lot, but he didn't get quite as much screen time. I feel like as some of these other characters in S. Next up is Utsuro. Oh my God, I love Utsuro so freaking much. I'm just gonna go ahead and put him in S rank. That's where he deserves. I like how the most characters are in S rank. I like this cast a lot, what can I say? So like I suspected from the beginning that Yuki was either going to be the mastermind or be connected to the mastermind just because of those like weird, creepy, like Junko Kenny dreams he was having. But what I did not expect was just how messed up he was gonna end up being. So like the way I thought that trial was gonna go down originally was like Yuki is gonna be revealed to be the mastermind, but, but then after the power of friendship and a few hope speeches, he would be like fixed. But dear God, how wrong was I? I will never forget the absolute shock I felt when he revealed that he convinced Kenjo's dad to eat his best friend's remains. Like, I knew there was no coming back from that. I was like, nope, no, no friendship speeches can save this. Can even remotely hope to even save a fraction of this. One of my favorite parts of the entire game too is how they took the ending of Trigger Happy Havoc and flipped it. So instead of shooting down everybody's despair as Nagi, you're instead destroying everybody's hope as Utsuro. It's such a simple idea, but it's so satisfying. It almost felt like seeing the hope versus despair theme like come full circle. Circle. It's like you got to play on the side of hope as Nagi and Trigger Happy Havoc and now you get to play on the side of despair as Utsuro like that whole section just gave me like chills like I loved it so much. Like I said, it's like a simple idea, but I don't think it's something I ever thought would be like possible for me to play through just straight up despair, not like a oh, we should fight both hope.
hope and despair. It's like, no, <laughs> straight up despair, straight up Kinjo, I made your daddy, your friend's remains. What you got to say about that? I could not believe Lanouge decided to take it that far. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite moments in the entire game. I love it so much. And I feel like it's one of the really big reasons why I love Utsuro so much. So he gets S rank. Okay, I can avoid it no longer. It's Mitch's turn. Oh God, fuck you, Mitch, you piece of shit. I hate you so much. I mean, it's not a secret I hate Mitch. And I feel like the reasons I hate him are pretty obvious too. Like he's probably one of the most like comically unlikable characters I've ever seen. Like, okay, he shows up, his introduction, he's a douchebag. And then next you see him trying to like essay your best girl. And then after that he murders one of the most helpful and sweetest characters in the game. And then even after it's revealed, he continues to be a selfish douche trying to explain why he did it. He's like, I did it for sucker. <laughs> and there's like no backstory to explain it. Like his whole free time events is just like, sucker, <laughs> it's so hard being so hot <laughs> and famous. <laughs> it's like, shut the fuck up, dude. I will say, though, I love the memes of Mitch. The memes, A+. Plus. The chat has definitely made me like Mitch a lot more than I ever would have uh, if I would have just played the game by myself. <laughs> What I find so funny about Mitch is that like every other time I've hated on a character in a video, like without fail, I'll get somebody in the chat or in the comment section like defending them with their life, but not a single person, not a single soul has ever come to me to defend Mitch. Instead, I had people like making fake accounts, pretending to be Mitch being like, sorry guys, I did it for sucker. <laughs> like, you know? I will give him that in the flashbacks you see in chapter six, it does appear that he's improved as a person, you know, after hanging out with the other students in Hope's Peak. But you know, for me, it's too little too late. But I will acknowledge that he did grow some and that Lanouge at least tried to make him a slightly more likable douche. And honestly, I'm gonna make some lower tiers so that they won't even be close to him because they don't deserve that. There he goes. Finally, the Mitch tier. You do not deserve to be even close to Kakaru Inori or Maki. But anyway, this is my full tier list of all the characters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. It was really fun to kind of like revisit this playthrough because I had such a great time streaming this game with you guys. But yeah, feel free to let me know what you guys think of my tier list. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? And I'll link the tier maker in the description below if you want to do it yourself. And yeah, thanks guys so much for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I will see you real soon.